Hello everyone, my name is John Bussart. I'm an HPE Business Transformation Center Engineer for Ingram Micro. I help support servers, blade systems, storage, as well as networking technology solutions from HPE. In my videos, what I like to do is show you a slide from popular PowerPoint, and then demonstrate to you what that means within a management interface. Today, we're gonna to continue on our discussion with HPE's instant on series of switches. Specifically, we're going to look at a 1930 series switches and managing it through the local web-based interface. Now, this switch has two management modes. We can manage it from within the cloud through the portal or the mobile application or through the local web-based interface. Now, this solution is meant to be simple and easy to use for people who have little or no IT experience. I would say that's certainly true when we look at the cloud-based interface, and certainly the local management is also very simple and easy to use. There's a lot more options and items to be able to choose from with this configuration. And I would say you're an advanced user or a user who's coming off the Office Connect series of products, you might find the local interface interesting. All right, you have the ability to use some more advanced options that you don't get within the web interface, such as static routes, ACLs, extra VLANs, uh, spanning tree protocols, just a whole variety of things that you can do through the local interface. This would look more like a, a traditional layer two managed switch. Of course, we have static routes as well with the switch. Um, so uh, what I plan to do in this video is, is show you the same type of configurations that I did um, through the, the mobile and, uh, app as well as the web-based portal, but through the local interface. Obviously, there's a lot of things we can configure in this interface, but I'm just going to kind of give you a rundown of some of the things that you can see when you manage it through the local web-based interface. So with all that being said, let's explore this management interface. Okay, so I fished out the IP address out of the DNS server up here and it redirected me to this port. And here we kind of have our fork in the road. I can either manage it through the mobile apps or the online portal. Again, there's no charge or subscription that's needed for this. Or I can manage it through the local based interface right, where we have more um, advanced options for configuring. Solution. Again, if you're a user with an IT experience, I might direct you over here. Not that this is hard, there's just a lot more options that might be a little bit more confusing to some people. So I'm going to click Connect. And it comes up and it wants a username and password. You have to put something in. Um, so I put an admin. That's, that's what you need to put in stuff. You don't need a password, and it will log you in. And it's popped up where you've got to create a username as well as give it a password. Um, obviously, you'll probably want to be a little bit more inventive than what I am here. All right, so we'll enter that and we'll click apply. All right, so right now we are at the dashboard. All right, we could collapse this if we wanted to. Right, where we get a view of the switch. So this is the same switch I had configured in the uh, video that I used for uh, the cloud base as well as the mobile app. So over here is my connection to the internet. Um, down here I have an access point plugged into and here I have a PC plugged in. And that PC I'm remoted into over here. And if I open up a command line, I do an IP config you will see that my IP address is on the same network as my management VLAN here. All right, we can see other things, software version, what the current time is, we could set the system name. Let's, see, let's do our 1930 system location will be at Ingram Micro. And the contact will be me, John Bussard. All right, you got to click apply. All right, and then always you want to click save with the switch, right? You're going to apply your setting and then you're going to save your setting. All right. All right, so let's continue on our tour. Let's look at network setup. So certainly I'm doing DHCP. I would imagine more often than that, you'll want to set an IP address for this guy. Choose your management options, HTTP or HTTPS. And what's your management VLAN? Things like system time. All right, which might be handy to have. So we'll set up a server. 
And again, we'll apply that. We can test our configuration out. Then once we're happy with the configuration, we can save it. Go down to user management. If you notice, I'm still logged in as this admin user. So, but that will disappear um, once I log back in. So let's do that right now. So let's log out. Let's try to log in as that admin user. Remember, they didn't have any password. Notice it doesn't work anymore. So let's log in as the new user I created. Yeah, you can see I get right in. Right, so again, go down the network setup. If we go to user management, you notice that administrator account is gone at this point. That's one of the things we could set, account security seconds settings, as well as passwords, password strength rules over here. You go to switching. Going to get a view of the switch up here, some global configuration options, as well as interface configuration. So why don't we take a look at those real quick? Just so you can see, I don't plan to go through all these settings, try to configure all these. I just want to give you an idea of the more advanced capabilities that you have. We got some interface statistics down here. Yep, if you got if you need port mirroring, maybe for some security, right, we have the ability to be able to do that as well. Loop protection, right? This is beyond uh, spanning tree protocols. Some solutions out there need IGMP snooping, SNMP, right? trunk configuration. I suppose this is something I did in the last video. Um, they aren't plugged, these ports aren't plugged in, um, but um, I did created a trunk on 25 as well as 27. I will say that this switch, the feeling of the switch gives me a feeling of the Aruba OS or the, or the ProVision uh, based switches. Um, uh, you can see over here that we've got these um, trunk ports that are listed here. So, so why don't we group a couple together. So we'll select this port, and it, excuse me, that trunk, and then we're going to edit it. And then I'm going to select the 25. We'll do 27. We'll click apply. And you'll notice those ports are configured as such. So again, we want to save our configuration. Some advanced power settings. You got a variety of spanning tree options. Again, like a ProVision or an Aruba OS based switch, we default to MSTP, which is a lot like RSTP because we don't have the advanced configuration set yet or the different areas set up. VLAN configuration. So, I, in the last video, what I did was I took this port, port 3, which is where our PC is connected to. I assign that to a VLAN. So let's do that. Let's let's get that working. Um, so that'll be on port three. So first we're going to add the VLAN. So VLAN 87. I like the form. We'll just call it VLAN 87. I could name that anything I want. Obviously, I could put a range in here if I felt like it. Right. And then we're going to go down here and select VLAN 87. And then we'll take port three. I'll edit that. Now, again, this reminds me of an Aruba OS based switch. So there's no concept of uh, access ports and, and trunk ports. I just set the ports to either have tagged or untagged traffic because VLAN 87 will be untagged. Right? I'm going to include it, leave it as untagged traffic, and click apply. And then this port will act as an access port if you're dealing with other switches that are out there. You can see how that's set up. Now I'll need to pass that through VLAN 1 because that's kind of my connection to the rest of the world through the switch. I'm going to edit that. And with this, I'm going to include the port. This time it will be tagged. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of how port configuration kind of works in this. And of course, we want to click Save. All right, so at this point, this should be configured. Um, well, this is now on a new network. So let's change that let's do release and then we'll do renew you 
you can see now I'm on a new subnet. Okay. So those are some of the things that I did in the last video. Some voice VLAN configuration options. Neighbor Scurry LLDP configuration options here. We'll grab a port and just show you the options that you can configure there. All right, power over Ethernet. Again, I told you we had an access point plugged into port two. It's actually an instant on access point. You can see the little lightning bolt. You can also see here that see here that it's drawing power. We could edit this as well. We also have schedules that we can apply to this. So let's look at this real quick. All right, so say I wanted this access point to only be on, you know, during the week and not on the weekends. I could edit a schedule. Right, and we could do periodic. Let's say it'll start at Monday. Say people come in at 8 o'clock, so I better power this thing up at about 7. And then on Friday when they all leave, I want to shut this down and I'll give them a little bit of buffer. So why don't we do something like 18 and I'll click apply. All right, so now we have that schedule and I can go to PoE configuration. We'll go down, we'll take my port, we'll edit it. And we could apply that schedule to that port. All right, so that gives you a little bit of an understanding of these scheduled configurations. Okay, routing, so we can do static routes in here. We can enable it, disable it if we wanted to. Um, we could do IPs on ports as well as IPs on VLANs if we wanted to. DHCP relay. We've got the art table. Quality of service settings. Right. Class of service. Security settings. Whole variety of things. You can certainly set this up to a a radius server, something like ClearPass would be a good option. Port access control. Again, just showing you some of the different configurations. Port security. Protected ports. DHCP snooping. ARP attack protection. Denial of service protection, obviously some HTTP certificate information. Of course, you need some diagnostics. So we have things like logging, you could ping a source, trace route something, right? create a support log file. Look at your MAC address tables, or if you're using Arbonne, that's here as well. We could look under maintenance here. So again, this reminds me a little bit like a Rubo OS switch where I've got a dual image. And I've got an active image here. You can see that's a little bit newer than my backup image. And I could choose which one I want to boot from. And I could also back up and upload files. So I could transfer files to the switch if I felt like it. Back up files from the switch. So if I wanted to grab certain files, I could go through this process. So I could grab the active image, the backup image, the startup configuration, the running configuration if I felt like it, right? So why don't we grab the running configuration, right? I could choose how I want to transfer that. We'll do uh, HTTP, right? We'll start the transfer. All right, so that's downloaded. I'll show it in the folder real quick. You can actually open this up with Notepad if you wanted to. Take a look at it. This is where it differs a little bit from the Ruba OS switches. Um, those Ruba OS switches are more VLAN based. This seems to be more interface based. Um, I did go through the process of adding another VLAN in. So I added a VLAN 86 and I uploaded it to the switch. That did work. Um, you know, I, I was able to do that. I don't know how well documented that is, but something that I had the ability to do. Big file options. 
as well as reset. So over here I could reboot the device or reset at the factory default. So again, if I wanted to go out of this local management and try to manage it through the cloud and it needs all these advanced features, all I have to do is click reset and then reset again and it'll go through that process. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and please stay tuned for more videos.